Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below. And there you will find a link to my Ravelry page where you can look through all of the patterns I have available and maybe get one to knit up for yourself. Also in the description below, you will find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook page. We'd love to have you come over and join us so we can continue the conversations that we start here on the YouTube channel. I have a few fun things for you here today. I have, I'm so excited. I have postcards that came to my PO box for Ask Me Anything. And I also have a couple other things. I'll have a swift unboxing at the end of the video if you want to stick around for that kind of thing. But first, I want to show you. I have a new book to look at and I'm super excited. I have mentioned before, this is one of my personal favorite designers who is also a friend of mine and she designs you know, something that's very near and dear to my heart, which is shawls. I think this is her sixth or seventh book. I'll check and make sure about that before my video where I run through and take a look at this, but I wanted to show it. This is Top Down Shawls by Jen Lucas. They're all lace. I'll give you a quick look. I've already looked through it once, but I'm gonna spend a little more time with it so that I can tell you truly what um, what's in here, but I'm super excited and I wanted to show it to you. Uh, I also wanna mention, and I'll put a link in the description below, Jen has started her own YouTube channel, which is super cool, and she has a lot of really interesting information to use as a different format, which is, you know, fabulous. And so if you're looking for another knitter who likes to talk about knitting, you can go check out Jen. I think it's called Yarn Purpose. Now, it's time for our postcards. I am super excited. I have received five postcards uh, from multiple different locations and I'm, I, I really, I'm really excited about this. And what the idea here is, is I'll explain it. Um, it's ask me anything. You can ask me a question, but the only catch is, there are a couple catches, it has to be about knitting or, you know, not too personal questions about myself. I will field, but mostly knitting. And you have to actually take a pen and put it on a postcard and send it to me via snail mail. So um, you will find the post office box address in the description below. I might even put it on the screen. I would love to hear from you. So the first one I have here came via airmail. And it's October 16th is the date, so it took a little while to come. And it is Gorin Chem. Now, this person obviously watches the videos, enjoys watching me mispronounce things. <laughs> Gorin Chim Port. And this is from the Netherlands. I've never been there. That would be super fun to go to. You can see there's like a canal and stuff. I, and this is, says, hi, Barbara. I don't have a question just to tell you that I enjoy your videos on YouTube very much. She follows me on Facebook. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce your name. It appears to be Ingleborg, but it's also in cursive. So that's like doubling down on the making it hard for me to figure out. But thank you so much, Ingborg. Ingborg? That's a great name. Um, thank you so much. And you have such pretty writing. I really like the way you write the F. That is super cool. So, oh, well, there is the P.O. box. Um, and it's so cool that it came from the Netherlands. So thank you so much. I have a designated box that I'm going to keep all of my postcards in so that I can look through them and keep them nice. I would love to fill up this box. Okay, next up. Fun facts. <laughs> 
The candy apple was created in 1908 by William Kolb as an experimental window display at his confectionery store in Newark, New Jersey. The apple sold for five cents each and quickly became a hit. So I don't know about y'all, I did not know that candy apples were invented in New Jersey. I do know that New Jersey is the garden state and it is a lovely state. So, hi Barbara, greetings from Secaucus, New Jersey. I was just curious, what is your least favorite thing to knit? Mary. Well, Mary, that's actually a very easy question to answer. Socks. I don't like knitting socks. I, I just flat out don't like knitting socks. I want to like to knit socks. One year I declared it the year of socks and I'm like, I'm gonna learn to love socks. And it just, it just didn't work. I cast on, and it wasn't even my pattern. I cast on a sock. I, I got the one sock knit. And then my plan was to like maybe knit one sock a month. So at the end, I would have six pairs of socks. Uh, I managed to force myself to finish the second sock by like the end of the year. So it took me an entire year to knit one pair of socks. I just don't like knitting them. I want to. I know so many diehard knitters who always have a sock on the needles. They carry around a sock in a bag. They're just they're just all over it. And it it looks like I want to love socks. Now, one complication is I don't wear socks. <laughs> and now that I live in Florida, I really don't wear socks. So it seems kind of like a pointless endeavor to knit a bunch of socks when you don't wear socks, but they're so beautiful. And I see so many beautiful sock patterns and I favorite them on Ravelry, but I, I just don't love knitting socks. Sorry, I love fingering white yarn. I don't like tiny needles. I think that's the big problem. I don't like tiny needles, but so there you go. Thank you, Mary, for that question. Um, I hope I answered it sufficiently. I am very excited to learn about candy apples and we'll probably never forget that fact. Um, I am ready for my next um, like trivia game. But yeah, don't like knitting socks. Gonna put you in the box. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Um, this, one set, this one is from California. Now, I'm not familiar with this area of California. This is the Lone Cypress Stands Tall amid the rocky crevices of the California coastline. It's absolutely gorgeous. And if you live near here and get to see this all the time, that is fairly astounding. Love your podcast. Thank you. What is, was, is the most favorite item that you created? Seriously, that's not a fair question. <laughs> I honestly, you, I got this and I sat down and I thought about it really hard and I just flat out can't answer that. Now, I will say that there are pieces that I like that I'm more proud of than others, but really the answer is gonna be whichever one I just recently created or possibly the one I'm working on right now that you've never seen. <laughs> I just, they all, I like them all for different reasons or I wouldn't have designed them. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like the whole, which is your favorite kid question. I, I just, I'm sorry if I'm copping out, but I, I just can't answer the question. I mean, the biggest cop out would be maybe my actual book <laughs> because it's got a bunch of patterns in it, but I just, I can't answer the question. I'm sorry. Now, if you want to know which uh, item I created, I got the most use out of, it's fingerless mitts. My hands get cold. I wear fingerless mitts more than anything else that I've made. So um, I can't control my fingers. I, I, I wore those to Rhinebeck and stuff and actually get a lot of use out of them. But I wouldn't say that's my favorite though, unless it's favorite is defined by how frequently you wear it. So I'm sorry, I can't answer your question. I suck. <laughs> The second one was, what was the most difficult slash frustrating item you created? I'm going to go with difficult and skip the frustrating part because different things are frustrating for different reasons. Um, but I'm going to say, and I got it out so I can show it to y'all. The most f difficult thing I ever created is this puppy here. So this is Courant. This was in Twist Collective. You can see it was difficult for multiple reasons. One, it's very, very big. So it's like 1,200 yards 
of Estonian colorwork lace. Um, this was the second or third colorwork lace piece where I combined the mosaic, the slip stitch style colorwork with lace. And after I figured out that I could combine slip stitch colorwork with lace, I decided to see how far I could push it. So it was like, what is the most complex kind of lace I could do? And I decided to do some Estonian lace. And the thing that makes this particularly Estonian is this motif. See these motifs right here? Those, this specifically, let's see if I, this stitch right here, when you're getting into here, these flower stitches, what you're doing is like seven into three, and then there's five stitch, de five, five stitch decreases in that they involve five stitches and you're decreasing four stitches, so they're quadruple decreases, and getting the right thing to come out on top. Developing this pattern, and since it was very early on in my slip stitch color work, career um figuring out how to chart it how to make everything go the way i wanted it to do it took me six months of swatching and charting and going back to the drawing board and swatching and working on it so this piece just took i had to like make up two different decreases Let me see if i can get this up here I had to make up the two different decreases at the one at this point and then the one at this point so that the right color came out on top so it did what I wanted to do color work wise. Um, it was tough. <laughs> now I've gotten a lot better at this because I've made up my own rules and I understand better how the color work interacts with the lace but when I was designing this it was all new to me and so this one took a good little while and just the sheer amount of knitting um, was tough and the fact that since it was for Twist Collective, since it was for an online magazine, it had a deadline. So it had to be done in a specific amount of time. I think I had six weeks. So I'm going to hold this still because I know that sometimes I tend to wiggle things around so you can see that is what the body looks like. Um, when I'm knitting it, it's facing this way. And I thought it looked like um, like cathedral arches. But then like this, when it's this way, I think it looks like dragon scale. And then there's a, so this part is a specific, I think it's 14 stitches wide. And then this is like 16 stitches wide. So I actually had to do a transition between the two. And you can see right there, how the shape changes and it turns into sort of like one of those onion dome shapes. I really am particularly pleased with the way the transition, here, let me hold it up like this. It's hard to hold this thing up because it's so big. The transition between the two lace patterns, I was particularly proud of. See how the arches work? It's just, I don't know. So it was difficult, it was frustrating. Now, knowing all I know and having designed a lot more of this style pattern, I probably could have done it a lot faster, but when I did it, there were some tears, there were some bad words involved. Um, I wanted to show you, and so this is one of the idiosyncrasies of um, color work, the slip stitch style color work lace. You can see the back, there's no floats. Uh, you're just knitting stripes and slipping stitches. So you can see on the back that you don't have the look that you get with uh, stranded knitting when you're running more than one strand along each row. So this is Courant. Um, it is a challenge. I'm not gonna even pretend it's not. I will tell you though, it's not as hard as it looks because it looks like it's just nutballs. And it's not as bad as it looks, but it's a lot of knitting. And it was probably the most difficult thing I have designed. Okay. Do I enjoy color work knitting? <laughs>
I enjoy a very specific style of color work knitting, which is slip stitch color work or mosaic style knitting. It's cheater color work, you're knitting stripes, you're slipping stitches. That is the kind of color work that I like to do. I really have not explored stranded knitting. I have a couple books on stranded knitting. I'll link to a stitch dictionary review that I just recently got. Love it. Um, but yes, I do like color work. And this says, would you consider a series of color work knitting podcasts? Well, CW in Pasadena, I would really appreciate it if maybe you would comment in the comments below or on Facebook and be a little bit more specific about what you're looking for about the color work, uh, a series of color work knitting podcasts. Um, of course, I'm always interested in other subjects, but I need to know a little bit more because color work's a very wide subject. So. This is CW in Pasadena sent me this awesome from California. Um, let's do an easy one. Barbara, looks like Sarasota is near the beach. Do you get to take nice walks? Yes. Yes, I do. I actually went out to the um, beach at sunset the other night just recently just to sit there and watch it and being able to just say, hey, I want to go watch the sunset is awesome. Um, I know I still have like a job and I still do a lot of work. So it's not like every day walking on the beach and it's been really hot and we've had red tie, which has made it very stinky because everything smells like dead fish. But now that the air is getting um, cleared up and it's getting cooler, I anticipate many more uh, nice walks. If you want to see those kind of things, I do like take pictures of the sand and put them on my Instagram stories. So if you like that kind of non knitting stuff, please uh, follow me on Instagram. But yes, I do get to take nice walks. Ooh, I forgot. This is Oregon Lighthouses in Columbia. So Oregon Lighthouses clockwise from top left Tillamook Rock Lighthouse. Yaquin Bay Lighthouse, Cape Arago Lighthouse, Yaquina Head Lighthouse, Coquille River Lighthouse, Hecta Head Lighthouse, Lightship Columbia, Cape Mears Lighthouse, Cape Blanco Lighthouse, and <laughs> Mpqua River Lighthouse. That word has way too many. U-M-P-Q-U-A, Mkwa. I'm gonna go out on a limb and think that that might be um, a native word, Mkwa River Lighthouse. So there's apparently a lot of beautiful lighthouses in Oregon. And I, I don't know if you all are, this might be a new thing. Can you find a postcard that has really hard things for me to pronounce? Thank you so much, Marilyn, for sending me this um, and for watching, I'm super excited. And last one, which is just lovely. And this is actually the first one I received. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I took a picture of it. I was so excited. And this is from Margaret. Uh, she likes my YouTube videos. Thank you so much. She's knitting Onoclea. Awesome. I, I hope you've shared pictures. I would love to learn ways to weave in yarn ends at the completion of the project and best ways to join yarn ends in the middle of a project. And what I'm going to say about both these questions is I'm going to have to do a whole video on these. There are multiple ways to do each thing. Um, joining yarn ends, you can do Russian splice join, you can do spit splice, you can do all kinds of things like that. Um, the way I do it is I, I'm, I'm never happy with any join. So when I'm getting to the point where I know I'm getting close to the end or if I have to switch, um, I, I usually when I have about this much yarn, about this much yarn, I go ahead and I take the new yarn and I take the old yarn and I line them up from the ends leave about six inches to weave in ends and tie a light knot. So then as I'm knitting along, I eventually hit that knot and then I keep on knitting. Then when the project is done, I go in, I pick out that knot and weave in the two ends. 
that that is how I do it um, because I'm obsessive about weaving in ends and I don't trust knots and I trust very few joints. Uh, if you have non-superwash wool, spit splicing can be very useful. Depends on exactly the constitution of your yarn. But these really are going to involve like a whole video. So this is going to go back in the box and I will work on, I definitely am going to work on a weaving in ends video because I've also had a request for how to weave in ends on lace. Um, so weaving in ends and joining ends. This is going to be a, have to be a whole video or maybe two all by themselves. Thank you so much for this question, Margaret. It gives me ideas for new videos. And this is just absolutely lovely. Thank you. Um, thank you for being along for the ride. That's what she said. She's got beautiful handwriting. I mean, it's just look how pretty her handwriting is. Okay. So those were my first five ask me, ask, <laughs> ask me anything postcards. Thank you all so much. I look forward to getting new ones. Uh, I can't wait to see what questions y'all come up with. Keep them coming in. And real quick, this is also, you're getting an idea. So we're going to have, you're getting an idea of what upcoming videos there's going to be. There's going to be a book look video. There's going to be a weaving and ends video. There's going to be a joining things at video. And then not my scissors there's going to be a video for this let me show you what's in this package this is a long video by the way come here okay let's see what we got here i'm gonna have to knit Oh, it's such a chore. I have a new set of needles to try out. These are the Knitter's Pride Ginger Interchangeables. So they're wood needles, and I'm gonna have to get them out. Laser imprinted sizes, stained finish, laminated wood needles, and, oh, this is so cool. I'll be going through this whole thing later, and actually, it's super cool. So we're gonna do that. And then this, it's a magnetic knitter's necklace. I'm just going to let that sink in. And you're going to have to watch the video to figure out exactly what this is because I've got to figure out what it is first. And then these I'm just going to open up because they're stitch markers. So these are again from Knitter's Pride. These are the Knitter's Pride Zuni stitch markers pack of 12 and you guys y'all just have to hang on let me grab a needle to put them on I found the easiest way to show y'all needles is to put on needles so uh, show you stitch markers is to put it on needles oh <laughs> They asked me if I'd like to see any of these and I'm like, oh my gosh, those are just cracking me up like absolutely crazy. There's a bunch of them in here. Oh my goodness. Look, they're emoji stitch markers. <laughs> There's a heart face, a smiley face, winky sticky tongue out face. Uh, I think that's embarrassed face. Happy face. Let's see what else is in here. <laughs> the holding a rose in here. Let me see if it'll make it focus. Doop. Holding a rose in your mouth face. Oh, did you crank a face? <laughs> I, they just crack me up. So I think that's all the different faces we've got there. Yep. Yeah. So these are emoji stitch markers. And I love, they have, they're really nice and long. They have a little bit of weight because I find ones that have just a tiny bit of weight hang better. But this is my favorite style of stitch marker. The ones with these big loops because they're so thin. I, I clench my needle so hard I, with, if there's more here, I like all kinds of stitch markers. This is one of my favorite kinds, but these just crack me up. <laughs> and I almost never knit with yellow. So I'm always going to be able to see them. But look how funny those are. <laughs> so, and they come in this cute little packet. 
I'm probably going to put way more markers in here. So this is a pack of 12 markers, fun shapes. There's different ones, but I asked for these because they are funny. So there. There's the smileys. They also have gems, skull candy, meow, peace, and blooming blue. <laughs> but there. So if you need emojis on your knitting, Knitter's Pride, they got your back. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please click that like button. If you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Be on the watch out for the new videos we talked about. And again, check in the description below to get my PO box. If you have a question for me, you can ask me anything about knitting. Thank you so much.